I think if we were to put our logical hats on and to think that in order to lower my blood sugar, when I don't eat sugar at all in my diet, I'm going to add sugar to lower my blood sugar levels. It's so perplexing. If your blood sugar is going up on a carnivore or meat-based diet and it's scaring you or giving you anxiety or uncertainty, and you're not sure what to do or why it's happening, I highly recommend watching this video. Hey guys, my name is Judy Cho and I'm board certified in holistic nutrition. And I have a private practice where we focus on root cause healing. And that often starts with the carnivore cures, all meat elimination diet. So I've been meaning to do this episode for a while now, but having a full-time practice keeps me busy, but I just wanted to share because one of the big concerns we get on this diet is why is my blood sugar going up? My fasting glucose, my A1C is up when I'm doing my blood work. And this is causing me to be sick. After working with thousands of carnivore clients and patients that we actually run blood work on, we have seen that the fasting blood glucose will sometimes normalize in time. So maybe your blood sugar will be higher for a little bit because the body has to rewire itself to be able to function with less glucose. And so it might just stay in the blood for a little bit. And that can be one of the reasons why your blood sugar is high over time on a carnivore diet or a meat-based diet, but that's a very small subset of the reason. It is true that most people's blood sugar goes up if you're eating sufficient meat on a carnivore diet. And I have some thoughts about that and I'll share that at the end. But for now, let me explain how you can make sure if your blood sugar going up is an issue or not. The first thing I recommend is don't look at any blood work in isolation. Your blood glucose and your A1C measures essentially the same thing. It's measuring blood glucose measures sugar in the blood at the given time you've taken blood work. So if you ate later in the night before you did your blood work, your blood sugar is probably going to be higher. Your A1C is a summary of the last three months of your blood glucose, but it tends to show the last two months. So if you were sort of not eating a carnivore diet or eating more carbs that can impact your A1C score. If you just started a carnivore diet, the last two months versus the three that can impact your blood glucose levels. But the A1C also, it is a measure of hemoglobin's lifespan. So if you're healthy and your red blood cells are living longer, there is a higher chance that the average per red blood cell is going to have more sugar than if you were on a high carb diet and the red blood cells are dying early. It's a false positive if, if you want to think of it that way. So for some plant-based people, their blood sugar might look really good, but it's because their red cells are dying earlier. What we recommend in our practice is to actually measure many more things than just these markers. We are not really concerned about blood sugar. Yes, it is the excess sugar in your body that can cause damage because it becomes really sticky in your body. Think about corn syrup and it's start sticking to everything in your body, your organs, your systems. And so it can cause a lot of damage. And that's what we call the oxidative stress. But we are really concerned about insulin. And it is the way that if we are becoming hyperinsulinemic or insulin resistant, that's the thing that causes inflammation, weight gain, and so on and so forth. The biggest recommendation we always have to our clients that are worried about their A1C and their glucose levels is to track their insulin. Now, insulin itself is a very unstable marker to test because it goes up and down. It's a hormone. So it makes sense that depending on what day, what emotions, what stress, what sleep, what food you ate, your insulin will look a little different. So there's several markers that we like to look at to make sure and see a more holistic picture of insulin. So we check the fasting insulin, which is the most unreliable marker, but that's the one that most people get, but the fasting insulin. And then we look at the LPIR score. So it's the lipoprotein insulin resistance score that comes with your NMR panel. It's a cholesterol panel that shows all the different particle sizes and different sizes of your cholesterol markers. And if that LPIR score is high, then it's also a sign that you can be um, more insulin resistant. And then the other marker to check is your C peptide. So oftentimes C peptide gets released with your insulin, but C peptide is a more stable molecule to test. So you have three markers you could test other than your A1C and your fasting blood glucose. And if those insulin markers are pretty well within range of what's healthy, then it's probably not a big issue that your glucose is up. So if your blood sugar is going up, 
then I would look at those three markers. Again, the LPIR score, the C peptide, as well as your fasting insulin. Another marker to look at is your cholesterol panel. If your triglycerides are above hundred milligrams per deciliter. And again, I'm thinking that you've been on carnivore for a while now, if you were in the two hundreds for triglycerides and now you're at 150, I think that's great. You're trending in the right direction, but let's say you've been carnivore for a while and your triglycerides are still above hundred there is something that you have to do to change your diet. You might be eating too many liquid fats and your body can't handle it. Or you might be eating too much fruit if you're having that as part of your carnivore diet. But your cholesterol markers can show a level of inflammation in your body as well. And just pro tip, if your LDL is super high and your HDL is above 85, I know for some people that will make you fall into the lean mass hyper responders, but we also see LDL get messed up, meaning that maybe you're going to have excess in your body because of mold illness. But that is just a side note or a pro tip. Now, going back to the blood glucose levels, when I say it's going up, I don't mean like your blood glucose is in the 130 milligrams per deciliter or that your A1C is 6.0. I'm saying that if you're maybe at 5.5, 5.8, or if you're in the low hundreds, um, that's something that we often commonly see as a carnivore. Now, if it's above 100 or a lot more above 100, that's when I start wondering, uh, how are you eating? And we try to track that. Some people, if they're eating mostly protein without a lot of the fatty meats, that can cause your blood sugar to rise too. Another big thing that you could really do is getting a continuous glucose monitor. So those are those little things that you can attach to your arm or your leg, and you can see your blood sugar and what it does throughout the full two weeks of your life. Uh, whether you're sleeping, whether you're awake, you just track that. And if your blood sugar is, even if it's in the low hundreds, but it's always consistent. So there's not these up and down swings. That is a good sign. We do want our blood sugar to go up a little bit after we eat. Cause that's a normal human biological effect, but you don't want it to go up like super high, maybe 50 milligrams per deciliter above where it was right before you ate, because it is indicative of insulin being released. So when you have these constant roller coasters throughout the day, that blood sugar going up and then insulin having to come to save the day. And then if your blood sugar imbalanced or insulin resistant, then cortisol has to come and save the day. And then that will impact all of your adrenals, your hormones, your stress levels. If your blood sugar is high and you're not sure if it's safe, you can get a continuous glucose monitor and see the trends to see if it's pretty much within the safe range. The other factor I always ask is symptomatology. How do you feel eating this way? If you are sleeping better, you're feeling better, you have more energy on a carnivore diet, or things are just a little bit better than they were eating a standard American diet or whatever other diet you were eating, then why does that blood marker matter so much? I love using logic and just practical thoughts in the way that we think about health, because a lot of times that's our inner innate wisdom. And I just think it's so odd that because our blood sugars are going up. So our A1C shows that there's more sugar in our body or that our blood shows more glucose in the body. So the answer to that is to eat more sugar. So we want to lower our sugar by eating more sugar. Like, tell me the logic in that. And I just find it strange that we want to reduce our blood sugar levels. And so the way we do that is by eating sugar or certain carbs. Now, I know that people do see that improvement. So if they add back carbs, maybe it's lower carbs. So it's not super starchy carbs and they'll see their A1C go down and their blood glucose goes down. But how do you know that's health other than you're chasing a number, but maybe it's going down because now your insulin has to work a little bit more to shuttle away the glucose. But if that change is not really making you feel better, my question to you is why are you doing that? If you're only doing it to rebalance your blood glucose, I don't know if that's the answer or the ideal thing to do. So I've been meat based for seven years or carnivore, strict carnivore for three of those. And my blood sugar is in the probably high eighties to low nineties on a daily basis. If I check ketones, I always have at least some 0.5 maybe, but my A1C is about 5.3. Sometimes it'll go up to 5.5, but I'm not too worried because I've used CGMs many times and my blood sugar is so boring to look at. It's not even fun to use a CGM and I sleep through the night and I've done all the other markers of the LPIR, which is, it was around 25 
or less, which that means it's the lowest insulin sensitivity. My C peptide was under two and my fasting insulin was under five. So these are all indicators that my insulin is good. My energy feels pretty good on most days. And so I am not worried that my blood sugar is higher than when I was plant-based when my plant-based days, I think my blood sugar was in the seventies. So if you're worried about your blood sugar levels, your A1C, your fasting glucose on a carnivore diet, I highly recommend looking at all the different markers and then you can get a CGM and then also track how you feel. Uh, make sure to get somebody that understands how to read the blood work in a low carb space or a carnivore space. Uh, we also read and interpret blood work as well and offer blood work. So I saved the best for last. I know people still want to understand, but why is my blood sugar going up? And I found a few studies where I thought it was so fascinating and I don't know, this is a working theory right now. So that's why I'm sharing it at the end, because I don't know for certain, but I do think this phenomenon is amazing. So I'm going to share a couple studies as to why I think on a carnivore diet or a diet that restricts carbohydrates, why your blood sugar might go up and why it actually might just be a human adaptive response. Okay, so the very first article is called Normal Glucose Metabolism in Carnivores Overlaps with Diabetes Pathology in Non-Carnivores. So I'm going to give the disclaimer first that dolphins and cats are not humans, and I understand that, but we consider carnivores mostly dolphins and cats, and they consume a diet high in protein and fat with little carbohydrate content. So what they found in this article, which I find so fascinating, that carnivores that don't have insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia are showing similar makeups during periods that they're not eating carbohydrates. But it's showing that a normal response for dolphins when they are strictly eating carnivore is that their blood sugar goes up and that it's a normal response and it looks very mirrored to a metabolic illness, but that it isn't a metabolic illness. Now I will share all of these studies in the show notes, but it's so fascinating. So maybe our blood sugar is going up because it is a normal response and that it is not something that means that we are becoming more sick or more diseased. In this study, dolphins and diabetes applying one health for breakthrough discoveries is talking about how to observe dolphins and trying to support people with insulin resistance. But again, they have observed that dolphins are readily able to switch in and out of diabetes like states. For example, overnight fasted samples collected in the morning from dolphins show changes mimicking populations of people with diabetes. When dolphins were fed a big meal of fish, they had an insulin resistant response. And when they were fed with water with 10% dextrose, they had an insulin deficient response. So the ability of dolphins to switch from type two and type one diabetes provides a unique model for understanding diabetes and insulin resistance. Now, there are not many people that eat a carnivore like fashion that are humans. And so when we are eating this way, maybe that is exactly the same thing that is happening to us. So it is not that we are in a disease state, but this is a normal response when we are not eating carbohydrates, when we are eating a different way than the average American or the average person, but our blood work measures and standards are based on the average population then maybe it is not the right measure to be going after. We are okay and understand that LDL can go up on a low carb meat-based diet. And we accept that it is okay that our LDL is above 150 or 180 and that our triglycerides should actually be under hundred when the standards is 150. So then why can't we accept or maybe consider assuming that we are looking at all blood work and symptomatology, maybe blood glucose going up on a carnivore diet is okay. Okay. So the last one isn't really related to this blood sugar, but I thought it was so fascinating while we're talking about dolphins. Anyway, they found that increased dietary intake of saturated fatty acids showed a decrease in ferritin. Now ferritin is iron related. It's the stored version of iron, but we have seen in our practice, many people have high levels of ferritin. It is not because we need to just donate blood. Yes, that could be a way to reduce it. And I don't recommend donating blood more than one time a year, because you might just reduce your iron stores and you need iron to have oxygen in your body. But we see ferritin high when people have inflammation in the body that is not related to the diet. But in this study, they show that eating saturated fatty acids can reduce ferritin and other metabolic syndromes in dolphins. So again, if you were to combine all three of these studies, you see that Dolphins, when they eat carnivore, their blood sugar goes up and it's a normal response. And then secondly, when they eat saturated fats, their metabolic syndromes go down. 
I think it's so fascinating. I'll probably include some of this stuff in carnivore cure version two, and even share more details and nuance about this. But when your blood sugar is going up on a carnivore diet or a meat based diet, please understand context. I know we want to just focus on one number and say, now I'm healthy, but one number is just one number. You have to look at the big picture, always consider symptomology, always consider if you're feeling better, and then know that there's always nuances. And also consider working with a practice that works with carnivores so they know what the norm is versus just going to your standard doctor that doesn't understand a carnivore diet, doesn't support it, and will just give you reasons to stop eating that way when you know, in fact, that it's helping you. I hope that this conversation gives you an idea of why carnivore can increase your blood sugar levels and why it may be okay in context. And just know that we see studies where it shows eating a carnivore diet can actually raise your blood glucose, even in dolphins. Now you may laugh that it's a dolphin and not a human, but this is really what we have so far. Hopefully we'll get more research out as the carnivore community grows and we can do more studies that legitimize that blood sugar levels do in fact go up on a carnivore diet. I can share in our practice, the people that do blood work, we do see insulin in normal levels and we will see blood sugar in the high nineties and the A1C around 5.5. But I think if we were to put our logical hats on and to think that in order to lower my blood sugar, when I don't eat sugar at all in my diet, I'm going to add sugar to lower my blood sugar levels. It's so perplexing, but I'll leave you with that. Okay, guys, make sure to eat a lot of meat. Take care of your bodies because it is the only place you have to live. I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.